to research and study that keyword, to ensure our safety and protection, to bring food to the hungry. Thank you for the gift of consolation. Subayan ko ay sumilang ang util na pagmahal. Ito'y binibiyaya ng may kapal. Binyalagaan ng binibagiyakap na Dambin ang hangin sa penas ng silangan Sa piling mo ngayon, tulungan at tanulag lang
to the Lord for His good, for His love endures forever. FMIJ, isang tagumpay niya, dahil sa'yo, Panginoon. Forty years of presence in the Philippines, twenty-three years as delegation. Malikayang kaarawan sa'yo, St. Francis delegation. Ang rami mong pinagdaanan. May lungkot, may saya. May dilim, may liwanag. May unos, may araw. May hirap, may ginhawa. Ngunit sa kabila ng lahat, patuloy kang tumatayo at naniniwala at umaasa na ang mga salita 
ng iyong foundress. Mother Barbara Micaleli ay magaganap. As she said, Charity must be the only motivating force of our life and all our actions. May it never be said that this institute, which was established for the relief of all human miseries, was born in vain. No exception should ever be made. Muli, maligayang kaarawan sa iyo St. Francis Delegation. At maraming salamat po sa lahat ng mga tumutulong para siya ay lumago. Good evening, Philippines and the rest of the world. Today is July 24, 2020. Thank God, it's Friday. Let us welcome the weekends together with the religious men and women in the Philippines. I am Father Angel Cortez of the Order of Friars Minor. Join us tonight and be updated with the latest in consecrated life, the church and society. I am Sister Happy Montesilio of the Daughters of St. Anne. We will be your companions in your new religious routine every Friday evening. We are The 8pm Habits. Habits. Parang kailang lang, no? Naka uh, tatlong episode that ito na yung pang-apat. Uh -oh. And we are very fortunate to have uh, a musician and liturgist <laughs> na kasama natin sa episode na ito. But our topic is not about liturgy. Oh, of course. <laughs> but siyempre, we are fortunate uh, to have Sister Cora Israel of the Franciscan Missionary Sisters of the Infant Jesus. Thank you, Sister, for joining us Welcome tonight po. in this 8 p.m. Habits. <laughs> So, Sister, pwede bang paki-introduce na ba kahit papano? Ano ba ang FMIJ? Saan kayo ang mission nyo? Para malaman naman ng ating mga tagapanood. Okay, kami po yung FMIJ Sisters. Meron po kaming 12 communities po dito sa Philippines. And then, this year, we just celebrated our... We celebrate our 40th year of presence dito sa Pilipinas po. So, meron kaming apostolate para sa mga children, meron din po kaming schools, saka tumutulong din po sa mga parishes. So, sister, in this 40 years of your presence, so sigurado may marami kayong mga activities? Marami, sister. <laughs> Pero ang nangyayari po, lahat cancel. cancel. <laughs> Buti heard... na lang, nakapag-opening po kami, nag-concert po kami last December ah, yes, 7. No, uh -huh. And then right after noon, Wala na po. So hopefully sa closing ulit. Pero I heard, sister, you have your weekly program? Opo, meron kaming online formation para sa mga youth. So invited po lahat every Saturday, 8 o'clock, kahakbang mo online youth formation. Aba, sister, that's also our mm -mm. rosary, 8 p.m. Kasabay, nakasabay po ng rosary <laughs> ng <laughs> <laughs> Habang nagdarasal ang mga consecrated person, eh, yung mga kabataan, umaate naman ng inyong online so, pinapada uh, ay, so Pinagdadasal. pinagdadasal. Parang marami pang pumasok mga sa kabataan mga kumbento natin. natin. Oh, wow. So, kahakbang mo online, Saturday, 8 o'clock in the evening po. Mm -hmm. Hindi makukompleto ang episode na ito kung hindi tayo maglalaro ng ating favorite game na 4 picks one word. Simple lang para manalo. Kailangan nyo lang hulaan ang mystery word using the four pictures shown one by one throughout the entire show as clues. Habang pinapakita namin ang picture, you will also see one letter of the mystery word revealed. 
Kaya dapat kayong sumabaybay to see all the clues. Ano pang inihintay natin? Ito na ang ating first picture. Share this live video and put your answer in your Facebook post along with the following hashtags. Hashtag AMRSP, hashtag 8pm habits, hashtag 4P1W, and then your answer. And the first viewer to correctly guess and post the mystery word will win 200 pesos worth of cell phone load from AMRSP and the 8pm habits. Tatawagan kayo ng aming staff para malaman kung paano i-claim ang prize. The winner will be announced through a separate post in the AMRSP Facebook page. Kaya make sure to click the like button and follow the AMRSP Facebook page. Leading our stories tonight on the religious reports. Acting CBCP President Pablo Virgilio David issued a statement saying that the church does not meddle in government. This statement was issued in response to Chief Presidential Legal Counsel Salvador Panelo's accusation that the church is interfering in government affairs and is violating the separation of church and state. After the CBCP issued a pastoral letter condemning the Duterte administration's pattern of intimidation, Bishop David said that we do not have political influence over the country's judiciary, nor do we interfere in the operations of government. Our only influence is our conscience because it is our duty to form consciences and we are accountable to God for this. Meanwhile, Manila Apostolic Administrator Bishop Broderick Pabilio challenged the Office of the President to press charges if indeed the Church did violate the Constitution. Meanwhile, here's our top stories from the Holy See and the Universal Church. Cardinal Zenon Grotcholevsky died last July 17. He was 80. Cardinal Grotcholevsky served the Holy See for 43 years, starting as a notary in the Apostolic Signatura in 1972 and ending with his service as Prefect of the Congregation for Catholic Education in 2015. Cardinal Grotcholevsky served as Papal Legate to the Quadricentennial Celebrations of the University of Santo Tomas in 2011. His funeral was held last July 18 with the rite of comital presided over by Pope Francis. The Holy See's Congregation for Doctrine of the Faith, or CDF, issued a vademecum on procedures regarding cases of sexual abuse of minors. The document, which is issued as a manual and not as a normative text, is the fruit of the February 2019 meeting of Presidents of Bishops' Conference convened by Pope Francis. In a statement, CDF Prefect Cardinal Luis Ladaria Ferrer SJ noted that the manual is envisioned to evolve as time passes by in order to be more responsive to changes and shifts in laws and local realities. The Congregation for Clergy released a 24-page document on reforming parishes and restructuring dioceses to better serve the singular mission of evangelization. Cardinal Benjamino Stella, Prefect of the Congregation for Clergy, underlined the societal changes, including increased mobility and the scarcity of priests in the West, point to the need to look beyond the idea of the traditional parish. He further mentioned that it seems to me that we have to remove the keys, open the doors, air out the room, and go outside, he said. Here, this outgoing dy dynamism, which the Pope has spoken of many times, means looking outward, seeing who needs faith, the whole world of youth, the whole world of those who need God, but do not know which way to go. 
Now for Jews from the religious men and women in the Philippines. Hello Apostolic Vicar Bishop Charlie Inzon, OMI, was canonically installed in Holos Cathedral of Our Lady of Mount Carmel last July 16. Bishop Inson, formerly provincial, formerly provincial of the Oblates of Mary Immaculate, was installed by fellow Oblate bishops, Cotabato Archbishop Emeritus Cardinal Orlando Quevedo and current Cotabato Archbishop Angelito Lampon. Bishop Inson was ordained bishop in the Cotabato Cathedral last May 21. The Capuchin Province of the Philippines and the National Shrine of Our Lady of Lourdes announced that the venerated image of Our Lady of Lourdes will be canonically crowned this August 22. The coronation was originally scheduled for May 2, but was postponed due to the community quarantine. And finally, for news from the local churches. Kalokan Bishop Pablo Virgilio David is currently serving as acting CBCP President. Bishop David, currently CBCP Vice President, temporarily takes over from Davao Archbishop Romero Barrios after the latter stroke last May 23. Archbishop Barrios is said to recuperating well after his discharge from the hospital last July 6. Father Tony Labiao of the Diocese of Novaliches replaces Father Edwin Garrigues of the Apostolic Vicariate of Calapan as new Executive Secretary of the National Secretariat for Social Action or NASA. Father Edwin Garrigues served as NASA Executive Secretary for 10 years. NASA serves as the CBCP Social Action Arm. Most Bishop Emeritus Manuel Sobrevinas died last July 18. He was 96. Bishop Sobrevinas led the Diocese of Imos for eight years, succeeding Bishop Felix Perez. At the time of his death, he was the oldest living bishop in the Philippines. He was laid to rest in Imos. Cavite, following the funeral mass presided over by Imos Bishop Renaldo Evangelista last July 20. That's it for this week's Dose of Stories from the Church and the Society. Join us next Friday for more of The, the Religious, Religious Report. Report. Don't go away. Up next is POV, Points, Opinions, and Views when we return. Here in your new religious routine every Friday evening. We are the, the 8 p.m. Habits. Ito na ang second picture para sa ating four picks, one word. Share our live episode and put your answer in your caption along with the following hashtags. Hashtag AMRSP, hashtag 4PM Habits, hashtag 4P1W, and then your answer. The first viewer to correctly guess and share the word will win 200 pesos worth of cell phone gold from AMRFP and the 8pm 
habits. Natawagan kayo ng aming staff para malaman kung paano i-claim ang prize. Kasama niyo pa rin po kami ang inyong 8pm habits. And now, we are on our most popular segment, ang POB. Yeah, that's points, opinions, views. At ngayong gabi, we will talk about human trafficking and violence against women and children. Pati ba naman ngayon? I mean, we are in pandemic and then there are still such human trafficking that is happening. Parang lahat na lang. <laughs> Alam niyo mga kapatid, nung nandun pa ako sa North, hindi rin ako makapaniwala na kahit sa kasulok-sulok ang parte ng Pilipinas, nangyayari ang human trafficking. Ah, yes. Sa probinsya, lalong-lalo na. Kaya siguro, it's really timely that even in this uh, COVID-19 pandemic, pag-usapan natin para maintindihan ng mga kapwa natin consecrated, ano nga ba ang human trafficking? Yeah. <laughs> And now, to give us the first POV of the night, we will be joined by Attorney Lawrence Aritao, Director of the National Prosecution Development NPD and of the International Justice Mission. Magandang gabi po and welcome to the APM Habits. Uh, thank you for inviting me. We all know na kayo po ang IJM ang naging pioneer noong 2018 sa pagdantad sa online sexual exploitation or OSEC bilang makabagong paraan ng human trafficking. Maraming bansa ang kailangan humabol upang umakma ang batas sa patuloy na nag-e-evolve na teknolohiyang ginagamit sa exploitation of women and children. Ano pong hakbang ang ginawa ninyo upang himukin ang mga government agencies around the world at sa Pilipinas na din upang pagpuunan ng pansin ang exploitation through cyber sex? So, um... Para masagot yung question na iyon, uh, a bit of context, no? uh, IJM discovered uh, the presence of online sexual exploitation of children siguro um, as early as year 2011, nagkakaroon na po ng mga referrals na ganitong klasong, klasong uh, cases. No? Uh, and it just so happened na at the time, yung type of human trafficking na hinahandle ng IJM was commercial sexual exploitation of children. And since children din yung mga nagiging biktima sa OSEC or online sexual exploitation of children, parang kami rin yung naging natural na partner ng mga agencies, government agencies, para i-study yung ganitong uh, klaseng krimen at uh, gumawa ng tamang tugon. And uh, since that time, uh, by year 2016, nagkaroon na talaga ng program ang IJM para labanan ang online sexual exploitation of children. And now to go to the question, ano yung ginagawa ng IJM? Uh, lahat ng mga programs po namin are collaborative, kasama po doon ang mga government agencies and of course yung mga civil society partners, katulad ng mga faith-based organizations. And isa sa mga naging pinaka-importanting collaboration is yung pag -e enforce ng batas or kailangan talagang ipagpatupad yung batas against OSEC, which is a form of human trafficking. So nagkaroon po, nagkaroon po ng Philippine Internet Crimes Against Children Center headquartered po sa Camp Krame. Kasama doon sa center ay ang Philippine National Police, uh, National Bureau of Investigation, United Kingdom National Crime Agency, Australian Federal Police, at yung International Justice Mission. At doon po nagkakaroon ng pakikipag-ugnayan within that center. And yung mga cases ng USEC, dahil ito ay isang international or global crime, kailangan talaga ng collaboration between different countries para magkaroon ng child protective operations at para ma-arrest din po ang mga offenders na nagpapagtupad ng itong uh, offense. Uh, alam natin yung social and economic aspects po ng usapin ng human trafficking. Pero mula po sa legal na perspective, ano po ang kahalagahan ng isang matatag na justice system sa pagtigil ng human trafficking at slavery? So, um, para sagutin yung question na yun, I'll go back to yung the first question, which is anong ginagawa together with other countries. And so, ang masasabi ko dito is, yung Pilipinas mismo, since dito yung mga victims, 
upang magkaroon ng ng justice or yung kustisya ang mga victims kailangan talaga yung yung system ng ating uh, not only yung law enforcement but also the judiciary the prosecution system kailangan gumagana siya para magkaroon ng justice not only for the victim but also para magkaroon ng preventive measure against uh, human trafficking and uh, you know how does that happen so you know how how can i say that by let's say prosecuting or through law enforcement nakakaroon ng prevention uh, sa mga sa mga programs ng IJM that i've worked in and nakapunta na ako sa Cebu i've been assigned sa Cebu sa Angeles sa Metro Manila at ang nakita kong consistent na result ng pagpapatupad ng batas is as long as very clear sa community na let's say human trafficking is uh, being combated through uh, law enforcement pati ng prosecution nakakaroon ng lowering po ng prevalence ng crime at bumaba pa po yung incidence ng pagta-traffic and through that lowering of the crime rate mas marami ang mga victims na hindi natin makikilala kasi hindi sila ma-victimize in human trafficking so there is a preventive effect sa pagpapatupad ng batas and yan yung nakikita namin na consistently nangyayari po kapag uh, matatag yung justice system at talagang pinapatupad ang batas in the right way so yan talaga yung value po noon not only will it stop yung current offending pero nagkakaroon po siya ng preventive effect para mas mas malawak yung protection para sa mga victims and para sa mga children that that would be victimized Thank you, Attorney. That's very informative. Pero, Attorney, you mentioned dun sa uh, yung na-discover nyo po na uh, ano yun? yung sa justice system, kung matatag na po yun, uh, we can prevent. Pero, patuloy pa rin po ang, ang, ang human trafficking. So, may, maki, nakikita nyo po yung, yung bagong mukha ng human trafficking. So, ano po ang kaya ang, ano pa ang na, natuklasan nyo na bagong mukha naman na sa panahon na ito ng pandemic. Oh, you, yes, you mentioned a while ago about the OSEC. Um, ano pa po kaya yung mga natuklasan niyo po, lalong-lalo na this time sa lockdown? Going now to yung situation natin ng lockdown, ang medyo unique na nakikita namin is since yung online sexual exploitation of children, nangyayari po ito through trusted adults, guardians, parents, na sila mismo ang nag-aabuso sa kanilang mga anak. Uh, since naka-lockdown po sila, uh, yung mga children actually naka-trap po sila with yung traffickers nila. And if you look sa mga partner agencies, yung statistics nila, and I can share a little bit, no? uh, partners in Australia have shared na tumaas po yung incidences of reporting sa kanila. I think by about 86% for image-based abuse of children, 40% increase in reports to its office for uh, different types of exploitation uh, and other types of offenses tumataas during this pandemic. So nakikita po natin na there is an increased risk para sa mga bata. And I'll just give some other uh, very important statistics while uh, we're talking about yung types of crime committed during the pandemic. OSEC specifically, Nagkaroon po ng uh, more than, I think it was 15 operations uh, to rescue children. And so there were and over 50 victims that were rescued during lockdown. So nakikita po natin na hindi dahil nagkaroon ng quarantine, bumababa po yung risk sa mga bata. Kundi actually what we've noticed is the reverse. And that is a very unfortunate trend. And medyo nakaka-highlight po na kailangan talagang maging mas vigilant po tayo sa pagpoprotect ng mga bata and just making sure na hindi bumababa yung effort uh, against online sexual exploitation of children even during the pandemic po. Kaya talagang napakalaking tulong nitong ginagawa natin ngayon featuring human trafficking kasi sa lahat ng areas natin mga religious present ito and na-mention nga ni attorney na tumaas ngayong lockdown, siguro ako yung una kahirapan no kasi walang trabaho so yung iba talagang napupunta sa ganitong gawain ang problema lang 
biktima talaga yung mga bata na walang kamuwang-muwang. No? Kaya nga, um, habang nakikinaw kay attorney, parang nakakalungkot naman, it's happening. And I I know one one case, talagang, o oh nga talaga, totoo talaga itong, itong OSEC, parang nakakalungkot, di ba? Yung mga bata ang nagiging biktima. And then, sabi nga, uh, attorney mentioned that it's the, with the accompaniment of, of adults. So, mm-hmm. Yung mga adults, siguro yung mga, even the, their own parents or, or their own tita, tito, di ba? Talaga, attorney. Thank you po. That's very informative. And I think with that, uh, with that, what, with what you shared, that will help us religious really to, to be aware of this. And we can help our, our society. We can also spread it in our ministry. Thank you very much, attorney, itong pag-share sa inyo. Talagang malaking tulong din po pati sa aming mga religious, para alam namin kung ano din po ang pwede naming matulong. So, thank you very much po, Attorney Lawrence Arita, mula sa International Justice Mission. Um, baka po later, Attorney, we will ask you again your last word or advice or challenge to us. So, thank you so much, Attorney. And we will be taking a short break. When we return, we will be joined by Miss Diane Rose Balatero of St. Mary of Russia Integrated Development Foundation Mission. Development Ministry ng RGS or it's known really of the RS Religious of the Good Shepherd. Here on your new religious routine every Friday evening. This is the, the APM Habits. Ito na ang next picture para sa ating four picks, one word. Share this live episode and place your answer in your post along with the following hashtags. Hashtag AMRSP Hashtag 8PM Habits Hashtag 4P1W and then your answer. The first viewer to correctly guess and share the mystery word to win 200 pesos worth of cell phone load from RSP and the 8pm habits. Tatawagan kayo ng aming staff para malaman kung paano i-claim ang price. Welcome back to POV, Points, Opinions, and Views. We have with us now our second guest, Ms. Diane Rose Balatero, former NCR Women Ministry Coordinator and is now the Mission Development Coordinator of St. Mary of Rasia Integrated Development Foundation Incorporated of the Religious of the Good Shepherd. Good evening, Ms. Diane, and welcome to the 8 p.m. Habits. Bahagi ng karism ng mga Good Shepherd Sisters ang ministry to women in distress. Siguro para sa kaalaman ng ating mga viewers, baka magandang maibahagi ninyo kung ano po ang current extent ng ministry nyo at ng ibang religious congregations sa pagsupil sa human trafficking, BAWC, at slavery sa Pilipinas. Ayun nga po, no? isa po talaga sa uh, tinutugunan ng mga madre ng mabuting pastor o yung religious of the good shepherd ay yung mga isyo patungkol sa mga bata at mga kabataan. Yan. Isa lamang po yung human trafficking dun sa mga um, ina-address namin mga issue. Pero meron po kaming mga residential facilities para sa kanila. Meron kaming community-based programs and we have advocacy program. 
sa aming pong residential facility, meron po kami, uh, nagbibigay po kami ng safe spaces sa mga bata at mga kabaihan na pansamantalang nangangailangan ng um, matutuluyan dahil sa um, nararanasan nilang mga pang-abuso. Meron kami sa, like sa ano, sa tinatawag po natin na uh, yung traditional trafficking natin ng mga nasa bar yan, meron kami tinatawag na drop-in centers talaga na even active pa yung mga kababaihan sa pagkatrabaho sa loob ng bar ay may programa na talaga tayong um, binibigay para sa kanila. So meron po tayong pwede silang pumunta sa atin, matutulog, kung, or mga kahit basic hygiene nila, pwede po silang punta sa ating drop-in center para as a safe space. So meron din po tayong mga community-based programs para sa uh, tugon natin sa human trafficking. Ito po yung sa aming um, outreach activity na ginagawa sa mga bar areas. Ito po yung pakikilakbay namin sa mga kababaihan na nasa ganitong trabaho pa rin kasi gusto namin uh, maintindihan kung ano nga ba yung kanila talagang ano, uh, sitwasyon para mas makita namin kung saan talaga kami makakatulong. So, ang aming outreach program ay hindi po siya intrusive talaga. Ito ay journeying with them, pakikilakbay talaga po sa kanila. And of course, we have advocacy program para sa mga bata at kabaihan, lalong-lalo na ngayon kasi pandemic siya. So, uh, nag-isip nag, nag kami ngayon ng mga creative ways kung paano kami mas makakatugon yan. Kasi dati we go to ano sa mga iba't ibang lugar para mag-conduct ng mga advocacy program. Pero ngayon kasi very limiting kasi dahil dito sa pandemic. So, doon kami ngayon sa social media nagkakaroon ng mga advocacy program. So, yun. So, yun po yung mga programa namin ngayon na para sa pagtugon sa mga bata at kababaihan, lalong-lalo na sa mga nabibiktima ng human trafficking. So, yun. Well, thank you, Miss Diane. That's very encouraging. That's very also informative. Actually, nung marinig ko, wow, tapang na mga mga madre at mga lay uh, partners ng RGS. Talaga po, um, it's really a very challenging mission. Um, sa ngayon po na nagkaroon ng COVID-19, uh, nagkakaroon ng bagong mukha. Kanina, uh, Attorney Lawrence mentioned about the OSEC. So, itong bagong mukha at pamamaraan ng human trafficking at slavery. Base po sa inyong nakaranasan sa RGS, with together with the RGS, ano, na po, ano po kaya ang yung magiging strategy sa pagpigil nito? pati na rin sa online sexual exploitation of children. Um, Lalong-lalo na dahil mukhang maraming kabataan ang palaging magiging online dahil sa vir virtual-based learning. Hmm. Nga, bago actually po nagkaroon nitong ano, COVID-19, ay kaisa na natin yung mga iba't ibang organization, lalo na yung ISJM. Partner po talaga natin sila dun sa advocacy at pag-respond dun sa uh, mission ng online sexual exploitation sa mga bata. So, bago mag-pandemic, nakasimula na po talaga kami ng mga advocacies. Kami bumababa po sa mga eskwelahan, sa mga simbahan, sa mga malalayang community talaga para magkaroon ng mga advocacy program kasama na yung OSEC tsaka yung sa human trafficking. Tapos ngayong pandemic nga po, isa po yan sa aming pinag-uusapan kung paano namin mas ipagpapatuloy yung advocacy. Um, especially talaga na pag sa usaping OSEC kasi napakalapit niya talaga sa pamilya. Kadalasan nangyayari siya sa loob ng bahay. So, yun yung isang tinitignan namin ngayon kung paano tayo mas mapapalapit sa pamilya talaga para mas matugunan. Bakit nga ba kailangan pumunta sa ganitong klase ng uh, exploitation? Especially na ang talagang in, um, tag, very close yung nangaabuso at ano yung mga batang ina-exploit sa ngayon. So, ngayon meron nga po kaming tinatawag ngayon dito sa Good Shepherd na ano, QRT, yung Quick Response Team namin yan. Ginuupo siya dito sa bagong uh, leadership team ng Good Shepherd ngayon bilang pagtugon dun sa mga um, tag dito, mga issue na mag-a-arise. Kasi para matutukan at matignan talaga kung paano kami mas mabilis na makatugon dun sa mga uh, sa mga kinakaharap ngayon ng mga bata at mga kababaihan given na nandito tayo ngayon sa isang very very challenging na ano na time ng pandemic so yun po
And we have, um, even before pandemic, talaga meron na din kaming program for OSEC. We have a parang assessment center siya, residential facility for online sexual exploitation ng mga exploited na mga bata. So, we provide safe space sa kanila para sa kanilang healing and recovery. So, yun. We hope na may, may pagpatuloy namin ito kahit may ganitong ano, pandemya. Kasi even nung kasagsagan ng quarantine talaga, our program responding to OSEC never stop. Yan. Tumatanggap pa rin po talaga kami ng mga, uh, mga bata na kaya namin accommodate dito sa aming facility. So, yun po. Yeah, and hopefully marami rin mga kongregasyon ang ma-inspire no, to venture this kind of ministry. Uh, alam kong hindi madali, pero katulad ng inspirasyon ng mga RGS, eh, patuloy na humuhubog ng mga laiko na katulad nyo na nagiging kalakbay sa ganitong klase ng ministry. Uh, kapatid, ano, ka, ano, ano pa kaya ang hamon uh, para sa simbahan? particular sa aming mga consecrated sa patuloy nating paglaban sa human trafficking, slavery at online sexual exploitation of children or OSEC. So, nung nakita ko, ko nga po yung tanong yun, no, kung ano yung hamon, <laughs> naalala ko pag kami nagbibigay ng advocacy sessions, especially sa mga parishes, sa mga simbahan talaga, yan din ang lagi namin tanong. Ano po ang call to action po ninyo dito. Pagtanong, pag, pagtatanong-tanong, ito po yung kanyang ano. Una po siguro nakita namin na hamon, no? Ay paano natin uumbisahan at pagpapatuloy yung mga nasimulan natin na um, yung malakas na boses ng simbahan para sa ganitong klaseng karahasan sa mga kapat at kabaihan. Uh, hindi kasi lingid sa atin na uh, um, dito, meron pa rin talagang mga pangaabuso na nangyayari kahit sa loob ng ating mga simbahan. So, yun yung strong advocacy siguro namin ngayon na um, paano natin makapanatili na safe space ang loob ng ating simbahan? Hindi lang physical space, kundi tayo ding mga nagtatrabaho at uh, parte ng simbahan. Paano natin makapanatili na safe siya? Diba? Uh, sabi nga na isang madre natin, sana we should set a good example of not covering abuses. Yan, kung meron man pong nangyayari sa atin, sa loob o dun sa mga nasasakupan natin kasi sa amin pong karanasan talaga ay napakalaki ng tulong ng simbahan kapag uh, talagang tinutugunan yung mga pang-abuso na nakita at naririnig nila. Very affirming and appreciative po kami sa lahat ng parishes talaga na tumutugon sa ganitong klase ng pang-aabuso talaga. Especially pag concern ang mga bata at mga kabaihan. Second, siguro is nakita namin yung strong presence ng mga church youth group sa simbahan. Nung kami po ay nag ikot ikot para sa advocacy, nakita namin na very active yung mga youth. Yung siguro yung isang hamon. Paano natin sila uh, mapuprotektahan itong mga youth natin na nasa simbahan? Especially sila ngayon yung favorite ng mga ano predators ngayon. Kasi ngayon, syempre yung mga kabataan natin, uh, sa social media talaga ang kanilang ano tambayan. So, as uh, ilang simbahan, paano din natin sila mas matutulungan na maging safe din sila sa mga online activities nila. Given na meron na tayong, um, um, meron tayong platform kasi para sa kanila. Kasi we've seen several youth groups talaga dun sa loob ng simbahan. So might as well use them para uh, dun sa advocacy natin. Um, isa din siguro is, sabi nga namin, yung OSE kasi talaga ngayon napakalakit sa pamilya. Paano din kaya tayo matutulungan ng simbahan, especially dun sa basic ecclesial community sa BEC po, di ba? Yun po kasi sa BEC sa pagkakaalam ko ay napakalapit niya talaga. Ang programang ito ay malapit sa mga pamilya talaga. So, isa din po yan sa tinatanong namin, paano din ba maipapasok ng simbahan, di ba, dun sa BEC yung ganitong mga klaseng advocacy, especially na pamilya talaga yung masyadong affected. Kasi sabi nga namin, yung sa mga usap-usapan namin ay parang pagtitignan mo talaga, ang usapin ngayon is ano na nga ba yung kultura at ano nga ba yung mga values na ngayon ng family natin. Nagkagulo na ba at kaya nagkakaroon ng ganitong exploitation ngayon na minsan talaga ang nagiging Um, parang facilitator nila yung sarili talaga nilang mga kapamilya. So, yun. 
talaga na balik tayo sa komunidad, balik tayo sa mga pamilya at tignan natin kung paano talaga. So, yun po. Thank On the part of Bayer Mars P, we're trying also to respond kasi uh, nagkakaroon din kami ng mga trainings no para sa loob ng simbahan, hindi natin alam. no uh, Yun din ang panawagan ng Santo Papa na bago tayo maglinis sa labas ng bakuran, ay Hello. linisin natin sa loob. So, tama yung sinabi ni Miss Diana tayo rin na mga naglilingkod kasama ng mga kalakbay nating laiko ay dapat aware tayo sa mga sexual protocols, uh, dapat may sexual protocols sa mga congregation. So, yung mga interesado, ipapaskill po namin yung schedule ng training ng AMRSP about it. Maraming salamat, Miss Diane. Talaga napaka-challenging itong inyong shinare po sa amin. So, maraming salamat po ulit. Ms. Diane Rose Balatero of St. Mary Euphrasia Integrated Development Foundation Mission Development Ministry. Ayan. Ayan. <laughs> um, when we return, maririnig, na, maririnig naman natin sa POV ang coordinator ng Talita Cum Asia, si Sister Adele Abamo of the Salvatorian Sisters. That and more when we return here on your new religious routine every Friday evening. This is The, the 8, 8 p.m. Habits. Habits. The coordinator of Talita Kung Asia. Sister Adel, magandang gabi po. Good evening, sister. Good evening, sister. Welcome po sa 8pm Habits. So, alam natin na ang problema ng human trafficking at slavery ay isang international na problema na pangkaraniwan pa nga ay cross-border. Alam din natin na ang Asia ay isa sa mga human trafficking hotspot kasama ng Africa. Ano na po ang major milestone ng UISG at Talita Kum Asia sa pag-coordinate ng mga religious activities against human trafficking? I would like to start saying that Talita Kum is an international network of religious against human trafficking. Lumalawak na ito, particularly sa Asia. Marami ng countries na merong talita kum, focal persons, or coordinators. We still hope to set up more talita kum network in many countries, especially in Asia. We apply regular monitoring, coordination, supervision, and communications among networks. Talita kum is more of prevention work and partnership building with non-government organizations, with faith-based organizations, and government organizations. Protection work is done by religious congregation with centers and shelters, and we sometimes link reported cases to them. The role of religious is very important. Rel religious can do a lot to fight against human trafficking. Because of their strong commitment to justice, peace, and integrity of creation. And besides, religious can be found everywhere in the world. We only need to organize them as one for a cause and a mission. Thank you, Sister Adel. Um, tanga, tama nga po talaga yun, Sister. Madami, marami na rin ang nagawa ng talita kung Asia sa ministry na ito. Siguro po ang sunod ko naman pong tanong ay nakita niyo naman po ang paglago ng ministry na ito sa, na ito sa mga nakalipas na taon. Um, ano naman po kaya ang areas for growth ng ministry ng religious men and women or consecrate, consecrated sa usapin ng human trafficking? 
Okay, uh, I can see that the areas for growth is for all levels, whether in Asia or in Philippines. Talitakum shall, shall build up a wider collaboration and partnerships and strengthen Talitakum network through organizing and setting, setting up, as I already mentioned. But an, an, as an example, like in Philippines, in this year 2020 to 2021, we already plan to set up and strengthen Talitakum network especially in Visayas and Mindanao, and to reach out to more organizations, dioceses, schools, and dormitories for prevention work, because we believe that prevention is better than cure, though we need to have adjustment this time because of COVID-19. Talita Kums shall also follow the health protocols. Ayun. Alam mo, ang Talita Kum talagang isang malakas na arm ng AMRSP. Uh, talagang pinapahalagahan natin yung ministry na ito. Kaya nga nung nakaraan ay nagkaroon tayo ng convention ano? with the different congregations at yung mga partners natin, IGM, at syempre sa masiping na pumumuno ni Sister Vivian at ni Sister Adele. So Sister, bilang coordinator ng Talita Kum Asia, sa tingin niyo po, ano po kaya ang mensahe ninyo lalong-lalo na sa mga consecrated na nanonood ngayon at sa buong mundo para sa matagumpay nating laban sa e exploitation of women and children. Yeah, in our fight against exploitation and trafficking of persons of women and children, it is important to have courage and creativity. One expert say, the, the loss of jobs and livelihoods are a result of COVID-19 lockdowns has also raised people's vulnerability to human trafficking. And when virus crisis is over and the transportation will be available, traffickers and brokers will be working hard again to take advantage of people's uh, vulnerability. So it is a call to all advocates to strengthen the efforts of anti-human trafficking. May all be warned of this evil and crimes against humanity. May we increase the numbers of our collaborators to be one with us to condemn the cruel act of one's life and dignity. And we need to pray hard, pray more for the safety of our children who are our future generation. We all need to plant the seed of hope for them not only about the food for the table, but also empowering them to have life skills and deepened spirituality. Wow! Napaka-inspiring naman ng, ng uh, mensahe no? ni Sister Adele. At syempre, ng lahat ng mga naging uh, guests natin. Actually, nag-isip din ako eh. Syempre, no, when, without COVID, I mean, they... The, the ministry of this uh, about against human trafficking it's para it's very nice challenging pero mas challenging ngayon kasi we need diba we need to to make known to people that these things are happening so in so that we can we can avoid or we can lessen if not we can we can lessen actually as in the beginning attorney lawrence also mentioned it that it was really lessened but now that COVID, um, we are also restricted in our movements, mm -hmm. in our ministry. I mean, we cannot go. I remember that there was even that plan to go from one school to another to really mm -hmm. make the children aware of what is happening and for them also not to fall into this human trafficking. Kaya nga po, um, this time, uh, this COVID, really, um, this is the only way, I think, that we can continue this ministry to make the people aware of what is happening at this time. So, Sister Adele, maraming salamat po for your, for your information. And at the same time, you really work hard, Sister, in this ministry. Thank you very much, Sister. And good evening again. That was Sister Adele Abamo, the, sister of the Sisters of the Divine Savior, the coordinator of the Rita Poon Asia. Okay. So, mga kapatid, syempre, 
ang dami nating natutunan sa kanilang tatlo ano uh, siguro marapatin din natin baka meron silang gustong ihabilin o ibigay na hamo hindi lang sa ating tatlo kundi sa lahat ng mga religious at religious at mga nanonood nitong 8 pm habits attorney any last words Yes po. Uh, last words, huwag tayong sumuko. Huwag tayong mawalan ng pag-asa sa itong laban na ito. And uh, to those who are in the community of faith, we really serve a God who is able to deliver. So, uh, patuloy natin yung laban. Salamat. salamat Thank you, po. attorney Thank you, at sa IGM. Maraming maraming salamat po. Si Ms. Dayan. Yes po, Ms. Dayan. Ako po siguro is ano uh, kahit yung panahon sana ng pandemya no ay maging anput pa rin tayo ang uh, tag dito mag uh, paigtingin pa rin natin yung at yung ating presensya lalo sa mga bata kasi uh, sila ngayon talaga yung ano um tag dito grab grabe kasi yung risk nila ngayon so kahit nasa loob ng bahay yun kailangan talaga bantayan natin sila alagaan natin sila ito yung time talaga na kailangan nila ng mga ano ng um, people who will really uh, lead them into something na talagang uh, magiging okay talaga sila kasi this is a very challenging times din talaga para sa kanila so yun we advocate talaga na bantayan natin at alagahan yung mga bata kasi they are our future Thank you Thank very you, much, Dayan. Sister Adele. Sister Adele. Okay, um, for me, we need to have this in mind as our awareness, as advocate. Fear not in this fight against human trafficking because United can do a lot and we will be united with Jesus. Amen. Wow, amen. Thank, <laughs> you, sister. Thank you, sister. Mga kapatid, ano, parang we neglect to talk about human trafficking in our communities. Pero nakita nyo yung mga sharing nila, mm -hmm. napaka-importante. And siguro yung mga congregation na wala pang coordinator ng Talita Kum, baka ngayon pwede na silang magpadala. No? Kayo ba, sister Cora? Meron kayong... Cor Alam ko meron si sister Joby, pero Aha. ngayon, nasa Italy ngayon. Uh -huh. Kaya siguro pagbalik, Or baka magpadala kami ng isa, sana. Oh. <laughs> Kayo ba, Happy? Meron na kayong coordinator? But we have our center in Lanao. It's mm. actually for the children. So, mm. I mean, I don't know. What I know is the sister who are who, the sisters who are assigned there, they are also active in the, in the local or the provincial, even the provincial um, tawag dito area. And the sisters are joining trainings and updates and And other formation, formation. Mm -hmm. on how to deal with children, especially. Mm -hmm. Siyempre is a center for children. So that's, it's very important also to be aware and to be informed of all these things that are happening. Ayan, kung meron kayong mga questions about kung paano kayo makaget involved, no? Uh, sa IJM o sa RJS or sa AMRSP mm -hmm. sa Talita Kuom ay pwede kayong magpadala ng mensahe sa aming Facebook page para matulungan kayo ng aming mga media personnel na ma may turo at may direct sa mga tamang tao. I think it's a learning uh, experience. experience listening to our guest. Mm -hmm. Kung ako ang tatanungin, uh, siguro as a priest and as a religious, uh, I will make it sure na meron talagang protocols yung lahat ng ministry na meron kami, nang sa gayon, maprotektahan natin, hindi lang mga bata, kahit yung mga kalakbay ng mga bata, at tayo din mga consecrated persons. And I think those who are also listening listening to us at this time na, o oh nga, dito sa kapitbahay ko, may nangyaring ganito, I think we can be also the, anong tawag dito, wala akong term, we, they can also contact us or through us, And then, alam na natin, there is the IJM, that you, uh, the Talita Kum, the RGS. So, we can also, um, refer we, can refer them. The, re we can refer to them. Yeah. Dapat maging courageous lang talaga tayo, Father. Yes. Mm -hmm. Kahit sa ang areas, courageous enough to tell and also to be open. Yun lang. Yes, we have really learned a lot. Although it's a sad topic, but yeah, as what, 
attorney said we have to go move on <laughs> laban lang laban so we are here Ito na ang kukompleto sa ating gabi. Here is our final picture of the four pics, one word. Don't forget to click the share button of this live episode and type in your answer in the caption along with these hashtags. Hashtag AMRSP, hashtag APM Habits, hashtag 4P1W, and then your answer. And the first viewer to correctly guess and share the mystery word will win 200 pesos worth of cell phone load from AMRSP and the 8PM Habits. Tatawagan kayo ng aming staff para malaman kung paano i-claim ang prize. Ayan. So, we are about to end. <laughs> Grabe, naka, ilan to? Apat? This is the fourth Apat episode. episode. Pero wag ka ha, yung mami ko laging nanonood. Siyempre. <laughs> oh, kayo, may kanya-kanya ba kayo? Ano? Salamat po sa mga sumubaybay. Yung kapatid ko nga eh. Oh. May ano na siya, 8pm habits na niya. <laughs> last, uh, sister, last week, naka almost 2,000 viewers tayo. Oh, ang dami. Eh. Sana may ngayon, 300. Fans kasi. Sister, ha? <laughs> Maraming fans si sister. Oh, si ngayon, nagdagdagan pa. Na no? Sister, <laughs> <laughs> so we thank Sister Cora, really. <laughs> yes. Thank so you. we also well, we also thank our guest co-host, no? Minyo po alam na pakagaling na musician si Sister Cora Israel of the Franciscan Missionary Sisters of the Infant Jesus. Maraming salamat kapatid. Maraming salamat din Father Angel sa ka Sister Happy sa ka sa sa inyo lahat sa pag-invite po dito ng napakagandang experience din. Marami din ako natutunan dito at sana gagabayan tayong lahat. Sana po hindi itong huli. Nga! <laughs> sa ulitin. O baka next time ano na sa concert si Sister Cora. Ah. <laughs> Muli po, I am Sister Cora Israel of the Franciscan Missionary Sisters of the Infant Jesus, FMIJ. And join us again next week for more stories from the consecrated life, the church, and the society. I am Sister Happy Manicilio from the Daughters of St. Anne. And I am Father Angel Cortez from the Order of Friars Minor. We have been your companions in your new religious routine every Friday evening. We are the 8 p.m. Habits. Habits.